Hello everyone, my name is Sean Conley. I'm the State Soybean and Small Grain Specialist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today I'd like to discuss some of the issues we've been running into regarding late season uh, drought stress in soybean. We're sitting on the Arlington Prairie today and it's August 31st, 2011 and we've typically um, get quite a bit of rainfall but this past year over the last month we've only had 1.49 inches of rainfall if you look at what soybean requires for water usage it's anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch per day so again given the the, the deficit in water we're starting to see uh, soybean drought like conditions or at least a water deficit conditions showing up so if we look to my right, we've got to get a good example of what this deficit or droughty conditions look like. Uh, typically what you'll see is uh, premature uh, maturity occurring. We also begin to see that the soybean leaves begin to flip um, and become, and that's basically due to a lack of water and the lack of turgidity in, in the soybean leaf. Uh, one of the mechanisms that soybean can perform in order to reduce uh, the, the impact of limiting water is to decrease the pore or the, the orifice space that allows uh, the, the release of water uh, to the atmosphere. Unfortunately, one of the mechanisms that also happens is that also re re uh, reduces the amount of carbon dioxide or carbon that comes into the plant that eventually turns into the photosynthates that drive yield. One of the main mechanisms we've been seeing out here in terms of, of some of the drought stress symptomology and the impact on soybean yield is the effect we have uh, seed abortion as well as pot abortion on soybean. So we kind of go into the soybean canopy, we can get a good feeling for this and right now we are assessing R6 soybean. So in general, across Wisconsin, the R6 soybean growth stage, which is the primary seed filling stage, lasts anywhere from 9 to 30 days. So on an, in an average year, we are about 18 days. However, one of the, the other things we tend to see, as I had mentioned earlier, in a drought stress environment, we really speed up that seed fill period, which would limit the amount of time we're in the seed fill um, duration period, which decreases yield um, by, again, through the seed abortion, pod abortion, but it also decreases the amount of seed size. So in instead of harvesting, you know, uh, larger seed, we tend to see smaller seed. And the implications for that come into harvest to make sure that when you're out there, uh, you set your combine up properly so that you're not having too much harvest lost due to uh, smaller seed passing through the combine. So a good example of the stress on soybean, we'll kind of dig into the canopy here, is you look at the effect of a pod abortion and seed abortion. Now on this plant right here, you can take a minute, and normally what we see is this is a three bean pod. We can see right here, however, we only have two beans that have gone to maturity. If we open the pod up and split it, we can get a sense of what type of, of yield impact we're getting. So if we see, one of the seeds of the three bean pod has basically aborted and that's one of the mechanisms that soybean has. So initially what they'll do again for soybean is to decrease the number of seeds per pod because uh, that would be the easiest mechanism for them to uh, reduce you know, the impact of drought stress is instead of having a three bean pod narrow it down to a two bean pod. The other mechanism is total pod abortion and a good example of that again is in the same plant where we see that at this node there would have been six to seven pods. All right, but because of the drought stress we've seen, we are just down to three pods that are going to mature. And again, we're at the two to three bean pod pods, but we have three to four bean pods, excuse me, three to four pods that are aborting. So again, we had really good yield potential out here we were probably 70 bushel plus beans a month ago, but due to the drought stress that we have you know, in certain pockets of Wisconsin, we've probably cut that yield down to 40, 45, or 50 bushels, depending on, on the, you know, the field and how much drought stress we've seen. 
Now one of the advantages we have in the state of Wisconsin is we have a, a, a dairy um, industry so that if growers are short on feed in a severe drought stress year, which we generally don't see, there's a lot of forage available for growers in 2011. But in terms of uh, yield production, a grower could go through and harvest soybeans as a forage if they're concerned about the, the yield potential on drought stress beans and, and mix these into a TMR ration. So again, this would be a good time if you're thinking about using that as a potential option to, for, for feeding soybean instead of harvesting it. R6 growth stage, where we generally see the highest total biomass as well as fairly good uh, forage quality that goes into the ration. We just have to be careful not to wait too long because once we get into maturation period, the R7, we tend to lose a lot of biomass, the leaves are gone, and we tend to get a much stemmier material and, and a decrease in tonnage per acre. So with that, if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to go to my website, which is coolbean.info uh, for any other updates re related to soybean production in Wisconsin.